guys, it's Multiplier. We're with Plugin Boutique today, having a look at their VST Synth Carbon Electra. And we're going to be making a sound you've heard quite a lot in a lot of genres, to be honest, but it's quite popular in trap. So it's sometimes called a, a whoop or a bubble sound. Anyway, it sounds a bit like this. This is the thing we're going to be making. So it's basically a nice little MIDI pattern. If I take away the 808s or just solo the synth, you can focus in on exactly what the synth sound actually sounds like. Pretty cool, right? So let's dive in and take a look to see how it's made. So here we have Carbon Electra. Now, right now it's all set up. So let's initialize the preset so it sounds right as it would do when you first load it up. So we'll do load initial preset. And now we have the standard sound. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to set the polyphony or monophony. So at the moment, it's set up to be in polyphony mode. So we see down under this polyphony, we can see as we move this around in the top, it says master polyphony, and then there's a number. And this is the maximum number of notes we can press at any given time. And for this particular sound, we want to simplify things so there's no overlap with MIDI notes. So we're going to set it to be monophonic, i.e. a polyphony number of one. That way, we can't accidentally trigger two notes at the same time. So we'll just drag this parameter down to one. And for this sound you hear all over dance music, especially EDM and trap and mumba ton, genres like that, this sound is normally made with a square. So we need to make sure that oscillator one is set up to be a square. And in fact, if we have a look up here, we see that that's in fact what the default is. You can always choose a saw. Sometimes a saw can be quite nice. But for our particular sound, we're going to leave it as square because that's exactly what we need. So now we have a square wave coming out. We need to define the overall envelope for our sound or the main, the main amp envelope. And to do that, we're going to play around with the envelope in the top half of these two envelopes in the envelope section. So in the envelope section, we have two envelopes. The top one, the clues down here is amplifier. So the top one is going to be our overall envelope for our sound. We can confirm this by playing around with it. So bringing the sustain down and playing around with it, okay? So we can confirm that yes, this is in fact the envelope for our overall sound. So let's in fact set this up to be exactly what we want. So in this particular case, I think we're going to set the sustain around just below the top, say 85, 90% or so. And then the decay quite short right around there. And then we're going to pull down the release so we don't have that release tailing off. A lot of the secret to this sound is to play the notes normally quite fast so you don't get a big tail. That's how you get this bubbly effect. So I think a release of around... Yeah, eight or so milliseconds should be good. So it cuts off really quickly. Cool stuff. So now we've set up our overall amplitude envelope. We can now start to do the, the interesting stuff, which is setting up the envelope for our modulation, i.e. the thing that's going to change the sound in some way. And we're going to do two types of modulation. We're going to modulate the pitch of our sound and we're going to modulate a filter. And so to modulate the pitch, first of all, what we need to do is use this modulation envelope here to modulate the pitch. In this case, we want it modulating upwards. So to set up this mapping, it's as simple as finding the pitch parameter here and dragging it all the way down to minus 100%. And now you can hear that, in fact, that envelope is modulating the pitch. Of course, now we need to define the actual envelope settings so it makes sense for what we want. In this case, we're going to have no sustain. Quite a short decay, maybe 50 so or 50 or so milliseconds. That gives it the attack, that thing at the start of the sound that makes it exciting and basically defines the start of your note. So when you're playing it, it jumps out in the mix. And then we're also going to set the release to be around eight or nine milliseconds as well, just to match the main envelope. So already it's starting to sound closer to what we want. We're getting that whoopy effect as the pitch is brought up a long way right at the beginning of the sound very quickly. So what we can then do now is use this same envelope to modulate the filter, which will give us even more of a whoopy effect at the start of us triggering the note. And to set up that in Carbon Electra, it's a case of going to the modulation envelope parameter within the filter. So the mod env parameter and moving it all the way back to minus 100%. And in fact, if you're not sure which way to go, because it might not be too intuitive whether you go 
that way or to minus 100%. The key is to use your ears, but also look at the visual feedback. One of the cool things about this synth is you get some visual feedback, not just with the envelopes, but in terms of what the filter is actually doing. So in fact, if we make the decay longer, we'll see this more obvious. So we'll make the decay for our modulation envelope, say uh, just under a second or so. And now if we look in this filter window here, we see it's moving as we trigger the note. So our modulation envelope is moving the filter. And let's in fact give it a tiny bit of resonance, say seven or eight percent, just to give it a little bit of high frequency action so you can hear that sweep. See, now there's a bit of a bump. That's the resonance. And now we've confirmed that our filter is set up correctly, we can then dial back the decay to where we want. Now it's going to be personal preference where you want the decay for this sort of sound, but this is going to be one of the main parameters to dial into your own personal preference, basically. In the case of the particular thing I was working on, I quite liked a super short decay time, around 50 or so milliseconds, 55 milliseconds. But certainly when it's that short, it works best if you press the notes quite short. If you want longer notes, maybe a longer decay. Might be a bit better, but as I say, it's up to you. So now we've got most of our sound configured and programmed into this synth. What we can do is dial in the final few settings. So what we're going to do now is we're going to make a decision. Do we want it to be, well, we're going to make a decision with regards to unison and how we want to spread the voices out. Do we want one voice in the center to be powerful and mono and central, which for some mixes makes a lot of sense? Or do we want this sound to be really wide, but also clean, which again, in other situations and other mix scenarios might make more sense. I personally, I usually prefer a nice wide sound for this sort of effect, but as I say, sometimes a simple mono sound might be best. But this next thing I'm going to show you is the thing we're going to use to make it wide, and we're going to use an effect called Unison. And we can do all that within Carbon Electra nice and easily, and it's all down in the master tab down here. So what we can do is we can define the number of voices. So right now the default is one voice, i.e. when we trigger a note, one instance of the square wave will come out. And it is in fact coming out of both speakers in the same time, so it sounds central. If we change this voices number to two, and then crucially crank up the stereo on the right to the max, and then dial in the tune, I like the tune around 22%. What this is doing is it's creating a wide sound. It's essentially putting one instance of the square wave in the left speaker, one in the right speaker, and then it's detuning them very slightly. And the effect of this is our brain hears it as two separate sounds, but also the same sound. So because they're detuned slightly, our brain still hears two separate things coming in from the sides, but it also goes, right, that's a pretty similar sound. That must be the same thing. So instead of hearing two separate sounds, one in the left, one in the right, we actually hear one sound being wide. So if you want to make a wide sound, that's a super cool little trick and it takes no time at all to program in. It's just a case of setting two voices. Works best if you crank the stereo all the way to the right hand side as we see here, and then dial in the tune to taste. That tune knob is the parameter determining how detuned each voice is relative to each other. And then finally, we're going to hit re-trig, which is re-trigger, i.e. every time we trigger a MIDI note, it will restart all our envelopes, in particular the modulation envelope. And then just for fun, we're going to crank up the glide as well to around the middle position. That way, if we decide to do some sort of programmed in thing or playing in a part where we might play notes that are far apart from each other, it will slide up. So for example... <laughs> And there you go, that's how to make the trap whoop bubbly sort of sound. Sounds pretty cool, right? Up in Multiplier, hope you enjoyed.